Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my review video for the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves. There's so much stuff to talk about, so be sure to go see it when you have the opportunity. We're going to be talking a lot about Batman in the next couple of weeks. I am doing a giveaway for movie tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite Batman moment from any movie on the video. If you do have a chance to see the movie early, please do not post spoilers in this video before this weekend, before the movie actually comes out. But the Batman movie with Matt Reeves is meant to be sort of a reimagining of the character in a slightly separate universe from the DCEU. You've all probably heard about how this is not connected to a lot of the other DC movies that have come before. Matt Reeves is trying to create a totally new universe for Batman and his sort of rogues gallery of villains and characters that he'll continue on with HBO spinoff series and Batman movie sequels. There are a lot of things in the movie that feel similar to other Batman movies. Obviously, it's the same group of characters that you've seen several times before, but the way Matt Reeves approaches everything, the way the actors play everything is very different. It feels very different from any of the Batman movies that have come before. But longtime Batman fans that have been through like seven different versions of Batman will notice a lot of similarities and nods to other Batman films and classic comic book stories. It's a lot like David Fincher's Seven, done with the Batman characters, mixed with a little bit of Batman the Long Halloween from the comics, as well as Batman Ego. It's a very psychological film, but not in the funny Joel Schumacher way, like he doesn't sit down for psychoanalysis in the way that Chase Meridian analyzes Batman, and then they start doing it with each other. There are no nipples on his suit, there are no Batman credit cards in this movie. Although I do have a fondness for Jim Carrey's version of the Riddler, this is a much more serious approach to Batman. It's almost like a Batman horror film, like give me a horror film, but with Batman characters. Just talking a little bit about the differences between Matt Reeves' approach to the universe, the characters, then Christopher Nolan's, Zack Snyder's, even Tim Burton's approach to the characters. What really distinguishes this film from a lot of the best Batman films that have come before is that Matt Reeves really wanted to approach everything from a neo-noir detective thriller aspect. He said that he started out with like a four hour cut of the film and the thing early on that hooked a lot of the test audiences, you always hear about test audiences, was the detective riddle solving aspect of the film. So it truly is a world's greatest detective Batman film like you've never seen before. Like during the Christopher Nolan films, Christian Bale's Batman did solve mysteries, but it was much more of a big action thriller type of film. And it's the same thing with Ben Affleck's Batman, much more of a giant adventure film. Matt Reeves tries to give it a very real world approach the same way that Christopher Nolan did, but with a very heightened gothic look to everything. Imagine if Tim Burton's Batman movies had a baby with Christopher Nolan's Batman movies. Like the look and feel of the Batcave, the Batcave is inside this abandoned subway terminal called the Wayne Terminus. It's literally the subway terminal created by Batman's ancestors. So it does feel very real, but very dark and gothic inspired like a lot of Tim Burton's Batman universe. But whereas Tim Burton's Batman movies had this very heightened arch version of reality, like where did he get those wonderful toys version of Batman? Batman in this movie does have a lot of wonderful toys, but everything in this movie, the way the characters act, the clothes they wear, the tech that Batman uses, even the Batmobile, feels like something that real people could actually create if they had a little bit of money. And in some cases, like the Catwoman, people who do not have money, a costume, for instance, that they could create on their own. Everything feels very Batman, but very homemade. Even though this is very early in Batman's career and they do address his origin story, they don't redo the origin story in the same way that all the previous Batman movies have had a version of that crime alley scene with his parents being killed by Joe Chill. We've seen Thomas and Martha Wayne killed so many times. It's one of the reasons why Matt Reeves said that he wanted to swerve on that and make it Batman Year 2 instead of setting this during Batman Year 1. Like he didn't want to remake Batman Begins and it does not feel like a remake of Batman Begins. You get a much better sense for what Batman is like after he's tried to be Batman for the previous year. Like he's been Batman for about a year when this picks up. But in the way things slowly escalate through a lot of Batman films, like Batman becomes Batman, puts the cowl on, starts getting rid of a lot of the powerful corrupt figures, sort of leaving this power vacuum where a lot of his classic rogues gallery of villains then start to rise up to fill that vacuum. Matt Reeves said one of the other things that really excited him about setting this during Batman Year 2 was allowing him to do origin stories for a lot of the villains, focusing specifically on the villains. Obviously, Batman is the main character, but a lot of the classic rogues gallery are just as big characters as Batman. Namely, Paul Dano's version of the Riddler, the Penguin, and Catwoman. There's been a lot of talk about the runtime of the film. Like I mentioned, Matt Reeves said that he started with a four-hour cut. I would love to see that four-hour cut of the film. The theatrical cut comes in right around three hours. I love long movies. I have zero problems with that. I thought the longer version of the Snyder cut made Justice League way better. So I'm all in on longer movies. 
There has been a lot of talk about some of the deleted scenes that Matt Reeves said that he might release after the movie comes out. You might actually see them online. There was a big tag scene at the end of the film with Barry Keoghan's character that he deleted. He actually kind of explained what happened during that deleted scene. So because he is releasing it online, they might change that character for potential sequels or the spinoff movies. So I am excited to see what happens with that. Just in terms of where this takes place in the multiverse, Matt Reeves said that it takes place on Earth 2. There is a DC multiverse that they're building with the Flash movie, so technically everything is canon to the DCEU, but only technically. The way Matt Reeves explained it is that he never plans to introduce an actual Superman character, for instance, or super-powered individuals into this Batman universe of Robert Pattinson movies. Make sure you wait to see the film before you get upset about that because DC does have plans for Batman crossing over with other characters. I'll talk about that at the end of the video too because DC does want to do more Justice League films eventually, more crossover films with the Batman character and the other major DC characters. But for now at least, the Batman that will cross over will not be Robert Pattinson's Batman. I thought Robert Pattinson was amazing as Batman and Bruce Wayne. I will talk about differences between the way he approaches the character versus the other versions of Batman like Ben Affleck or Christian Bale, even Michael Keaton's approach to the Batman character. I think when a lot of people heard that Robert Pattinson was cast as Batman, they just thought of him as the millennial Batman. And a lot of the casuals, a lot of the people who aren't really big fans of film or just movies in general, haven't really bothered to see any of Robert Pattinson's non-blockbuster movies. So like they only know him from the Harry Potter films as Cedric Diggory, or they've only seen him in the Twilight films. I will encourage you to go out and watch some of Robert Pattinson's more recent indie films because he tears it up. He's actually a fairly amazing actor. All the stuff he's been doing the last several years since he stopped doing a lot of the big blockbuster films is amazing. So most of the people making those Batman sparkles jokes are just people who do not watch indie film or just haven't seen any of his other stuff. Do not listen to them. He is fantastic in this movie. One of the things that's really different about the way they approach Batman during the film, the way he approaches him, is that he has less dialogue than almost any version of Batman that you've seen before. And I think that just adds a lot to his mystery and the way he inspires fear in a lot of other people. The way he enters scenes, the way that other people perceive him, it all just adds a lot to the terror that is Batman. It's a little bit like the way they approach the Din Djarin Mandalorian character during the Mandalorian season one when they're introducing him. The less dialogue they have, the more fearsome they seem. At this point in his career, this version of Batman is still kind of running around Gotham City trying to solve crimes, make things better, searching for his identity as Batman, just as the villains are all searching for their identity too. Like Oswald Cobblepot is a low-ranking member of the Carmine Falcone crime family. He's not totally sure where he fits into everything in the power structure. Each different actor, different Batman franchise is a different way of approaching the Batman voice. Robert Pattinson does not use any special tech like Ben Affleck did to create the Batman voice, but it's a little more down to earth, a little more realistic, a little more subtle than Christian Bale's Batman voice. This version of the Batman suit, all of his weapons, his gear, his tech feels like it could have been built by a billionaire and his butler inside their garage. I loved Andy Serkis' younger version of Alfred in this movie. He feels much less like a father figure to Bruce Wayne than previous versions of the character. He's much more of a partner than he is like a father figure. Jeffrey Wright plays a much younger version of Gordon. He's still Detective Gordon. He's amazing in pretty much everything that he does, so no big surprise there. During the movie, he has a sort of loose partnership that he's formed with Batman over the events of Batman Year One. So when the movie picks up, he's already been working with Batman as an ally. And obviously we have to talk about the villains. You can't talk about a Batman movie without talking about the villains. I feel like everybody delivers a really interesting performance. Paul Dano's version of Edward Nashton, the Riddler, is sort of like a Zodiac Killer version of the Riddler. And he even kind of physically looks like his costume looks like the Zodiac Killer's costume. Even though he's this crazy serial killer version of the character, he still feels much more real world, much more subtle than Jim Carrey's version of the Riddler. Even though I do have a soft spot for his version of the character. Colin Farrell is amazing as the Penguin. He's unrecognizable. I remember when the first trailer dropped, people are like, where's Colin Farrell? Is that supposed to be the Penguin? Who's that character? He's sort of like the Tony Montana Scarface of the Batman universe. The next big story they're doing is a big spin-off series on HBO for his character. Even though he really goes over the top with his character, it's still a little more subtle than Danny DeVito's version of the Penguin. The Penguin nickname is treated more as a derogatory term at Oswald Cobblepot's character, and he himself really, really does not like it. Zoe Kravitz is now my second favorite version of Selena Kyle Catwoman. She did an amazing job in the film, but I still think that Michelle Pfeiffer's version of Selena Kyle Catwoman is the definitive version. 
Just like all the other characters in this film, she gets her origin story. She feels much more subtle, much more real world than a lot of the previous versions, the Tim Burton versions of the characters. We had to talk about the music too. Music is such a big part of all the Batman movies. Michael Giacchino does an amazing job. There's so many iconic Batman themes from the different franchises, like the Danny Elfman theme from the Tim Burton era of Batman movies. You have Hans Zimmer's music from the Dark Knight trilogy. Michael Giacchino somehow manages to make the music in this movie feel totally different, yet very familiar at the same time. So I can't wait till they release it on vinyl and I can add it to my collection. They have been releasing a lot of the tracks on Spotify and other streaming services, so you probably had a chance to listen to some of the music already. Overall, I just felt like the movie was fantastic. I can't wait to see what Matt Reeves does in this universe next. Like I said, they have the Penguin HBO spinoff series. There are a couple other HBO series that they're working on. But after watching the movie once, here's my new ranking of Batman movies. And I'm not going to include all of the spinoff films. Like, I won't include that crazy Halle Berry Catwoman movie or all the animated movies. But going from least favorite to most favorite, it's Batman and Robin at the bottom, Batman Forever, Batman v Superman, Batman Returns with Michael Keaton, The Dark Knight Rises, then Batman 1989 with Michael Keaton, then Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Even though it's animated, it's still one of the best Batman movies of all time, so I had to put it on this list. And then the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson is just a very close second to The Dark Knight. Maybe it'll eventually win out as my current favorite after a couple more rewatches. I've only seen the movie once as I'm making this video. There is a small post credit scene tag scene at the end of the film, so be sure to stay through the credits. It's not quite what you expect, but yes, stick around. I'll do a video for the post credit scene after the movie comes out in theaters later this week, then I'll do a full breakdown Easter eggs video and other more spoilery videos for aspects of the film. Leave all your Batman video requests, your big questions in the comments, and I'll try to add them to my list. Everyone click here for my other Batman video to learn about what's going on with the sequel movies, and click here for my new Doctor Strange 2 Superior Iron Man video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.